العرش بقدسه رمضان شهر عنت لجلاله الأزمان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our a'mal in this holy month of Ramadan and give us the inspiration to take the best benefit from this month in the days to come, inshallah ta'ala. One of the things that we have been taught in this month is to actually facilitate iftar. Iftar means the breaking of the fast and to feed mu'mineen who are fasting at the time that they break the fast. So a hadith from Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu alayhi says, Ya ayyuhad nas, man fattara minkum sa'iman mu'minan fi hadha al-shahr. Whoever from you gives food to a fasting mu'min to break their fast, kana lahu bithalik inda Allahi itqu nasamatin wa maghfiratun lima madha min dhunubi. It is as if, in the eyes of Allah, as if he freed a slave or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return forgives that which is past. Remember we said that even if you have great sins, it is not greater than Allah's mercy. Allah's mercy is greater than your ma'asiyah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in appreciation forgives ma madha bin dhambi. Uh, and then Imam Sadiq is quoting this episode from the life of Rasulullah. As you know, the Imams, when they give hadith, it is usually always from things that have come to them from their forefathers from Rasulullah. Imam Allah said, Qila, Ya Rasulullah, Falaysa kulluna biyakdiru ala dhalik. All of us cannot afford this to feed mu'mineen. Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that ittaqun nar walaw bi shikki tamratin ittaqun nar walaw bi sharbatin min al maa. Why don't you be careful and save yourself from fire? This is an easy way to protect yourself. Even if you give one date, even if you give one sip of water to somebody who is fasting and you say to him, this is something for you to break your fast. So it doesn't have to be a lavish meal. It doesn't have to be a lot. It just has to have that idea inside you. Now, the thing I want to talk about briefly is why? You have given someone one date. You have shared with someone your food. Why is there so much thawab? Well, if we look at Sharia generally, we find that whenever there is something that brings the hearts of mu'minin close to one another, that brings the mu'minin, you know, feelings for each other to increase, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards a lot. Like, when the mu'minin pray together, there is great thawab, salatul jama'ah. When two families, two people from two families get married to one another, we have that there is no institution more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after tawheed than nikah. Why? Because two families are now becoming close to one another. Or for example, when two brothers who are not speaking, one of them tries to speak to the other one to to mend their relationship, there is great thawab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Or when you feed people, when you feed, why? Because it brings the hearts closer. This is very important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has created us in societies. On the other side, anything you do that breaks the people, Allah's anger is a lot more than what you think. For example, you break off with someone you're related to by blood, your brother, your father, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduces your life. You say, why such a big punishment for this? Because you are breaking society. Or divorce. Divorce is something that Islam accepts that it is allowed. But in hadith we have, it is disliked. It is allowed but disliked by Allah. Why? Because it moves the hearts. Or for example, ghiba or uh, slander, uh, gossip and slander. Even if you are saying something true about someone behind his back, it is ghayba. And if you are saying something false behind his back, that is even worse, tohma. All these things are hated by God. They are punished by God. Why? Because they break the community. So whatever brings community together, giving this tamr, one date, one water, it brings your heart close to your, his heart. 
it brings you together the muslim ummah they have good feelings for one another this is liked by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even this same principle is there in ziyarah so for example in one of the ziyarahs of abu abdullah al hussein alayhi salam as taught by imam sadiq we don't go to imam al hussein and tell him i love you we don't say that to him we say i love the one who loves you there's a great lesson in this there's a difference between i'm coming to you alone or i am telling you that this other one who loves you i love him this is what the imams have asked for that come to us together with your hearts together inni silmun not luck inni silmun liman salamakum wa harbun liman har if he is your enemy he is my enemy but if he is your friend i am his friend this tells the imam that we are coming to you as a society together and anything that brings we should be careful in our lives that if we know by doing this i will hurt the feelings of my brother they will move away from me they will be upset we should be cautious about doing it we should try not to do it and anything that brings the hearts together is something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards and it is something that we need to do may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us on this it is not always easy but it is something that is beloved to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um in terms of the masail today i want to look at the masail of traveling uh one of the things that we have is a slightly different ruling for people who travel you go to a different place that is not your home then your salat is reduced the salats that are four rakat are reduced to two rakat salat of musafir unless you stay in this new place for 10 days but if you don't stay for 10 days less than 10 days then you are a musafir and you will pray qasr 10 days means what is it from morning till evening no it means 240 hours if you arrive in that country and you are going to be there 240 hours 10 days is that then you will pray full otherwise if it is less than that you will pray qasr now if that happens in the month of ramadan then of course the same rules apply if it is less than 10 days in a place then you do not fast but of course there is qada afterwards um and uh, there is um, no fasting while you are there now there is a difference for people who are frequent travelers what is called kathir as-safar maybe there is a person whose job is traveling maybe there is a person for example who is who's uh, who's a taxi driver a pilot somebody who is always traveling by always generally we are told somebody who's traveling normally 10 10 days every month right on average in one year they will be away out of their home for 120 days in the year then that person is called kathir as-safar and this kathir as-safar he will fast even if he is in month of ramadan in a different place less than 10 days and he will pray full even if he is there for just one or two days in a foreign country he will pray full so this kathir as-safar is something that we need to uh, keep in mind now one last thing i want to talk about is that people say well in this day and age you know we don't have the same hardships that people had back in the day that they were in a foreign place you know um and uh, this is that they couldn't pray there wasn't that much time or fasting would be difficult for them and so on but these days everything is simple um, in the modern era no that's not the way to think about it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept this ruling and this is a rahma from him this is a kind of uh, gift from him and it is not for us to say that this is the reason why and that is the reason why you are not in your home allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduces the burden on you and that is it and we should take it like that inshallah wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our a'mal inshallah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ربنا عاش بقدسه رمضان شهر عنت لجلاله الازمان